Have you tried Audible yet? <sighs> Sis. Audible is my favorite way of listening to audiobooks. I recently just listened to a book called um, New Family Values and learned about the diversity of family types in the United States. I enjoyed it. If you want to give Audible a try and find some books that you may enjoy, you have absolutely nothing to lose. You can go to audibletrial.com slash research and get your free audiobook and 30-day trial. And again, you have nothing to lose, so why not try it out and let me know how it goes. Yeah, you wasn't expecting that music. That's just a taste. It's just a little sample of of what's coming um, in future episodes. But welcome, new listeners. Welcome to welcome if you return and welcome everybody. Hello. How are you doing? You're listening to The Research Her, the show working to improve the health disparities for women of color one topic at a time. I'm Alicia. I'm here learning and growing with you as we research our way to wellness. And today's episode, I am really like passionate about. This is something that I actually learned about about a year ago when I was listening to the Nutrition Facts podcast. And he talked about the association of antiperspirant to breast cancer. And when I first heard it, I'm like, oh my gosh. So I first thing I do is I get on Google. Does antiperspirant cause breast cancer? First thing I see is no. And before I finish, and I did this before I finished listening to it. Like I literally was like, I'm listening to the beginning of the episode and I'm like, let me just Google real quick before he drops something and I don't even want to pick it up, you know? <laughs> like, so first thing I see is no. So I'm like, okay, so he can't drop, he can't know what he's talking about, obviously. But by the time, by the, by the end of the episode, I'm like, no way, okay? I'm literally like, no way, absolutely not. So I listen to his podcast. And I go read the papers myself just to verify because I couldn't believe what he was saying. And yes, absolutely. Yes. Way. I'll put if he still has the podcast up, I'll put the link to that show in the show notes. I made a YouTube video about it. That link will be in the show notes as well. It's an it's an old link is about uh, was not old. it's a year old. At this point, but I was trying to talk to everybody about it. I needed everybody to know that about this. And yeah, I mean, let's just get into it. Before I get into the episode for real, for real, stop what you're doing. Please go and rate and review the show. It really helps with discoverability of the show and helps it grow. We got eight whole reviews, so let's make it ten. You, you can be that ninth person and then, you know, your friend going to be the 10th. So just stop, pause. I ain't going nowhere. I'll be right here. So put me on pause. I, ain't, I promise when you when you press play, I'll be here. It won't be nobody else. It'll be me. So don't worry. Did you review yet? Okay. Thank you. You didn't do it, but it's okay. You will one day. You will one day. I want to start off by saying I am not a conspiracy theorist, but (laughs) what I do believe is that the government is way more concerned with money than human health. That's my opinion, because you just think about it yourself. I shouldn't even have to explain. Look at all of the things that go on, whether that be food, whether that be cosmetics all these things being sold and I just think that the making of the money is more important than actual human health because if it wasn't there will be a lot of different things different options on our menus and everything else and then you start talking about women of color you 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 care about the health of women of, oh please sis just forget about it no 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 So let's, before I start talking about this topic, let's go over the differences between coincidence, correlation, and causation. 
And coincidence is whenever there are two things that just so happen to happen at the same time. So if you walk in and you see your auntie walk in, you're like, hey, auntie, how you get where I'm at? That's a coincidence. She was walking, you was walking, two things happen at the same time you see her. But if you try to repeat that experiment, or if you if you were to walk again, then you'll see your auntie again. Maybe not. That was just a one time thing, and it won't be repeated again. But a correlation means that whenever there are two things and they share the same pattern, so as you change one thing, the other thing changes either inversely or directly. They both change. They they both share some similar pattern, and that can be repeated. But what there is no evidence that A cause B or B cause A. And then there's causation. And I really don't think I have to go over causation. It just means that one thing causes another. And sometimes I find myself saying that one thing caused something, but really it's a correlation between it. Most research studies help us to see correlation. And then if there's a very strong correlation, we begin to say like, oh, it's causation. I'll try to be more cognizant of not saying that using the wrong term to describe the wrong, the right thing, because I think sometimes you get so passionate in a subject that you're like, oh, it's because it is. But really, it's just a correlation that these two things happen. Analysis of where breast cancer tends to happen uh, shows that 50 percent of all breast cancer occurrences happen in that upper outer part of the breast so the one that's closest to your arm your armpit and it was originally thought that it was because most of the tissue the breast tissue is there and um that's what was originally thought but that wasn't always true the number wasn't always 50 percent for the breast cancer being in that top region it actually happened over time that the incidences migrated over to that area of the breast. And what was also found was as antiperspirant use increased, so did the instances of breast cancer. Let's just start off with talking about the difference between deodorant and antiperspirant. Now deodorant, we rub under them pits because we stink, okay? If you don't do nothing to the pits, they will smell like shits. So you rub that because you're literally deodorizing your pits. And I believe every adult should be putting some under their arms to, to keep it. Because essentially what happens is um, it's, a, it's a moist area just naturally and bacteria will grow. And the bacteria in the armpits uh, cause it to have a smell. That particular bacteria smells. Now, you also have the deodorants that can be combined with antiperspirants. What antiperspirants do is keep us from sweating. So essentially, it plugs up the ducts in your armpit. And ducts are essentially what where the sweat comes out of. So the sweat comes out. Antiperspirant has an element called aluminum. And the aluminum goes into the ducts and it essentially causes them to swell up and it stops the sweat from coming out. So deodorant deodorizes antiperspirant keeps us from sweating now we talk so you have aluminum in your pits and there's a free flowing fluid that flows from the breast to the armpit and from the armpit to the breast so it's flowing back and forth and a bunch of test tube studies have shown that there is a relationship between between aluminum concentration and cancer-like changes in breast tissue now i always try to be conscious of of talking about test tube experiments because that doesn't say a whole lot about a whole human. Like I'm a whole human. I'm not just a few breast tissues. Um, uh, like I have uh, metabolism and all these things that work together. And if you're just looking at the tissue by itself, obviously that's the only thing that's going to react because it's in a test tube. But then there were some studies that were done in 2002 that shows that there is no relationship between breast cancer and antiperspirant usage. Essentially, what this says is that antiperspirant does not cause can uh, breast cancer. There are no studies that says that you use antiperspirant 
you get breast cancer. That does not exist. So let's start off there. However, in 2003, so a year later, there was a published a published study that was done that showed that the frequency and earlier usage of antiperspirant is associated with earlier age of breast cancer. As much as 20 years earlier in women using antiperspirant and shaving their armpits more than three times a week. I said it slow, but I want to slow it down even more. A study was done (laughs) that showed that if you start shaving and using antiperspirant at an earlier age, you're more subjects were more likely to get breast cancer at an earlier age. That is a correlation, they say. This can be associated with getting breast cancer up to 20 years earlier in women. So why why does this occur? Why do they believe that this correlation is happening? It's because what happens with shaving is you're, you're not only removing hair, you're also removing a top layer of skin. And it creates essentially the ability for the aluminum to more freely get, penetrate the skin and get to the breast. And it creates a six time increase of aluminum through the skin. Okay, so women who don't shave, whoop, whoop. You don't got nothing to worry about. Yo, you know, your aluminum levels will not be affected, but I couldn't really, oh, I didn't look hard enough. Find a study that talks about how many women or a survey that saw like how many women in the United States shave under their armpits. What I did find was that about 98% of women do hair removal, like of unwanted hair. Now that included women who just get their brows done, upper lip, nipples, whatever. It just included all hair removal, all unnecessary, unwanted hair. So I couldn't find anything that was specific to armpits, but I ain't seen no hairy pits. I see a few like liberal women who um, like Willow Smith and people like that who are starting to become more comfortable, but tops. Women have been shaving their armpits like in the mass culture. Like there are a few, don't get me wrong, but for the most part, a majority of women. Now, there is an FDA regulation that emphasizes do not use on broken skin. But it's literally some paperwork and some book that nobody reads. And I also believe some antiperspirants do have do not use on broken skin. But... It just says do not use on broken skin, but a lot of people don't understand that when they are shaving, that their skin is broken. So to you who um, choose to continue using antiperspirant, just consider the fact that you should probably use maybe just a deodorant or something uh, more natural when you, like the day that you shave. But so... The study also, so the study showed that women with breast cancer have twice the amount of aluminum in their breast uh, tissues versus women who don't have breast cancer. And what happened first, the the cancer or the aluminum, like is the breast cancer um, cells uh, t- extracting the aluminum from the environment or is the breast cancer tissue like producing aluminum? Um, They don't really know the cause or effect yet what but here is what really shook me was this study that showed that actually antiperspirant can make you stink worse so essentially the more the more you use antiperspirant the more you need it what's going on there is if when you use it was the bacteria that the deodorant should be killing actually multiplies in number when combined with antiperspirant. And it's like, okay, so now the more you use it, the more you need it. So here are my thoughts about this entire situation. One, this is a billion dollar per year industry deodorant by itself. That's a billion dollar per year industry. So again, the money factor. Although There is no direct relationship between breast cancer and antiperspirant usage. The FDA knows that there is a correlation between shaving your armpits and antiperspirant usage and breast cancer. 
and all the black women I know <laughs> remove that armpit hairs, especially in the summer. Now, in the wintertime, maybe, you know, I done seen some stuff in the winter, but the summertime, you know, we we definitely goes get the wax, we get the, the, the shave, we get all of that. But either way, I feel like breast cancer is the number one cancer for all women. Black women are 42% more likely, so almost half, not quite there, but almost half or 50% more likely to die, but it's actually 42% more likely to die than white women from breast cancer. And my question is, why would you chance it? There is enough for me to say, you know what? I, I'm not gonna, I don't sweat that bad under my armpit. So using a regular deodorant is fine for me and I can eliminate antiperspirant and be perfectly fine and not be musty or anything. And then with knowing that antiperspirant makes you more musty, you need it, you need more the more you use. I, I mean, it's not doing anything for me. The only reason I feel like people still use antiperspirant, especially those who don't sweat that bad, like you use it out of habit and you do it because it's something that you, that's all you know. And I guess one of my themes I'm seeing is like challenge yourself to do something different. Challenge yourself to not just stick with what you know, but why why test it? We know that black women are dying. We know that women of color are dying from these diseases and especially breast cancer why not go ahead and just be more conscious because it's like everything is killing you know it's a it's a lot of killers out there you know but something like switching out my deodorant that's an easy change to make like the diet like when it's time for me to go to portillo's if you know if you know you know if you ain't had you if you ain't from chicago i feel sorry for you it's time time to go to harold's that that's when i want to decide am i gonna risk it Am I going to risk it all? Am I going to risk all my health, all the things that I've built up until now? I've been in the gym. Am I going to risk it all for this Harold's or no? That's when I want to make those type of de- those type of health decisions. But a deodorant that I'm using every single day on my skin, we only get one set of skin. We only get one life. I personally would prefer just using something a little bit more, a little bit healthier for me. Especially something that is intentionally swelling up my armpits. I don't know. That makes me feel a little weird too. Like I'm putting something, I'm intentionally clogging up and swelling up my armpits for the sake of what? Vanity? I don't know. That's kind of weird to me. Here are a few things to consider. Well, I should say a few ingredients to consider when you, if you choose to go deodorant shopping. There are some options that kind of help with reducing uh, sweat. Because most of the products out there are going to be deodorants, but they aren't going to technically be antiperspirants. Two options that can keep you a little dry are uh, sodium bicarbonate. So that's just baking soda and then activated charcoal. So if you see those two, those can uh, help out a little bit with um, wetness. But they aren't going to be like your, your antiperspirant deodorant. So it'll take some getting used to. But you won't be musty. I'm like my, my aunt started this journey with me when I first made the YouTube video. And I remember her saying like, OK, I'm going to switch to this deodorant and I'm going to try it out. And I remember her saying because she goes to the gym a lot. So so I remember her saying like, I did sweat. You know, it's a little it's a little moist, but I don't stink. So that's important. So. Yes, you may still sweat more than normal, but you're not going to stink. And that's what's important. Another thing to consider are those ingredients just, just kind of in there. But uh, companies, what companies tend to do is they add these ingredients and they look all fancy and they, you know, they're organic molecules, but they aren't doing anything. And they'll be the main ingredient in your deodorant. Some are propylene glycol, sodium stearate. Those are two. And then water, of course. So uh, a lot of people have been like raving and promoting Kapari. And don't get me wrong, like it may, it, sh- it should work for people because if it didn't work, it wouldn't sell so well. But from my experience, it doesn't work long term for me. So that's the deodorant that I'm using now. But 
if I were to be doing so it works for me because I go to lab and I come home and I'm not doing too much moving. But if I was at, in Miami or something and I lived somewhere where it was hot and I was out for a long period of time, I don't think that would probably be the best deodorant for me. The first three ingredients are inactive ingredients. Uh, so they're literally just shaping and filling up the deodorant, but they aren't eliminating odor. They aren't doing it. So be careful about that. Those are three in are three inactive ingredients, and those are the most abundant in the deodorant. But like I said, it works for some people, but I need some activity in there. I need you to start killing these bacteria because I'll get musty. And I ain't afraid to say it. That's what the deodorant is there for because I will get musty. So for me, I'm still on my deodorant journey. I kind of want to get to uh, writing this down. I, I should probably start writing down these deodorants and marking my journey and talking to, and like having something to look back on. Like, did this product work for me? Will this product work for me? I actually should do that. Um, but I haven't found anything that works 100% right now. Like I said, I'm using Kapari. And I'm also using a brand called Sage and Ivy. And that is a black-owned brand. I will put the link to that company in the show notes. So that is a 100% natural deodorant. So it's made of like uh, essential oils, apple cider vinegar, uh, and some other things. So the apple cider vinegar is what's going to kill that bacteria under your arms. And it works. It really does. And Ahmad loves, my, my boyfriend loves it, uh, the smell of it. He's like, oh, you smell good. <laughs> but I can't use it all the time. I, I love the smell. I love the ingredients. But it does, it's not good for me personally to use because of my skin. I have a skin condition. So sometimes my skin gets really uh funny acting when it comes to natural ingredients and that's when it comes to hair products lotions like even I can't do shea butter uh every day because my skin doesn't really like all the nat the 100% natural I'm like the people who want to go natural ones who can't like I tried to like make start making my own butters but I just can't do butters every day all this is to say just Make sure you're paying attention to the ingredients in your deodorant. And if you have any questions, sis, our, our good sister in Google always got your back. And if you have any questions outside of that, you really don't feel like looking up yourself. Your good sis Alicia has got your back. Reach out to me and let me know what if you have any questions. But yes, that's what I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you're using a natural deodorant, please let me know if it's something that you, if it's a particular brand that you want me to try out, definitely send me a message. You can contact me at the Research Her on social media. So Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Also, if there are any topics that you want me to talk about on the podcast, feel free to contact me about that as well. And please don't forget to go and rate and review the podcast if you like this episode. That's it for today. Talk to you next.